Hi, I'm Larry and welcome back to my studio. Uh, today we're going to do the second part of this uh, fence that I found uh, on the way to the beach. I think I'm going to call it uh, Guardian of the Path. Uh, it's just an old fence. Uh, if you want to follow along, you can go to my, my blog spot and you'll find a, a link that'll take you to where you can find the picture. And you, there's also a um, design there that you can download. So you can do that and, and follow along. Otherwise, you know, watch, do your own thing. Now, you, one of the things I want, want to point out is watercolor always dries a bit lighter. So what may look really dark when it's wet will, will dry lighter. And that's a good thing because this now becomes the, the highlights on, on our uh, bushes and rocks and things. So, so that light wash, that first light wash, our underpainting is very important. Now I want to come in and I want to underpaint the, the post. Same thing. I do need to fill in a little bit of stuff there. Now if, if you remember, I had, here's my palette. I had a little bit of, of um, color there. This is burnt sienna and to it I added a little touch of, of orange and water. That becomes the dirt. That dirt's kind of a an orangey color. I have a little bit bit here. Now that's kind of dark, so I'm going to add a little water to it and come in, throw some of that that color in here. It's now since it's lighter, some of the um, things that go in front of it or on top of it will be dark enough that, that it will show up. That's where using that, that value, that light value, works to your advantage. But I'm just coming in, a little water, a little more of that paint. Come in, paint around some of this other stuff. Now, while this is drying, I, I can start working over there. I do want to add, I do have some, some of this gray. Kind of goes to the corners, but that gray is a mix of ultramarine blue. Oops. Ultramarine blue. Cobalt will work too. That's what that first one was. This is cobalt or ultramarine blue. A little touch of burnt sienna. And water. Makes a real nice gray. And there's just some bushes and, and weeds and stuff over here that I'm just going to kind of fill in some space if it blends in with, with all, what I just put down that's fine it's actually starting to dry it's pretty hot back here on my my porch so I just rinsed my brush this is a clean brush I'm just kind of touch the edges of that so there's no hard edges. It's just water on my brush. I take it and I just kind of lightly dry it off after I've rinsed it out. And then just touch the edges so it kind of softens, softens the edges. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that um, hooker's green. Now if you also um, go to the blog spot, you'll see in the sidebar on a, a bunch of pages, one of them is an equipment list. 
and it lists the colors that I use. So if you're, you're interested um, and want, or just need to know where to get started, uh, those are the colors that I use. And um, I try not to use anything that I haven't listed on my uh, equipment list when I'm doing classes. So just put that in there. Throw a little more of that that dirt color in. See, I'm I'm not really too worried about anything here. This is underpainting. This is going to get painted over some of it. Some of it will stay, but for right now, it's it's just underpainting. Just taking the water and kind of blending it out. Now this fence. And I have my, my reference material right up there where I can see it at all times. Uh, this fence I'm going to underpaint with a little bit um, bluer version of the, that gray color. And all that means is, is that I'm going to add a little bit more of the ultramarine blue to that gray. The ultramarine blue and burnt sienna are kind of my workhorse uh, mixture because there's a lot of gray in things. And so, I, you know, I'll put a little more blue in it, make it a little cooler. Okay, I'm going to come here. I'm just going to just go over this. That might be a little bit dark. Add a little more water. Paint this now. When I'm painting around, that what what I'm this would be the positive. This is a bush, and these little dips and stuff in between are negative space. When you're watercolors, you do a lot of what's called negative painting, and yeah, that's not whining and crying. That is painting around things, painting the space around something. So I'm just coming up here, that um, masking that I put on before allows me to just f paint um, freely. Now I can lift, and lifting is good. Uh, that just means I take a clean brush and lift off some of that paint later on. But um, it, when you lift, you also leave a little bit of color behind. So I'm just trying to get this done here. Paint around my bushes. Now if I paint over the bushes, it's no big deal. Like I said, I can lift out color if I need to. Um, just paint over it. It just, the because of transparency uh, of the watercolor, that will just make it a little bit darker, a little, have a little bluer tint. Use, use watercolors properties to your advantage. Okay, I want to... Let's see, okay, this one's low. I've, I missed a spot there, but that's all right. I keep looking up at my, my reference material. And this, this is actually a post right there. I'm not going to worry about that green that's on there. It just gives it character. Over here, come down, just paint both of those. I'll separate these boards out later. Here's this cross board here. And I do believe it comes across there and down into the bushes. Now these have 
a shadow that comes across. So I'm going to leave part of that white for something later. And that's the start of my shadows. These two are both kind of in shadow. That's why I have that right up there where I can see it. So I know where I'm going with this. Alright, I'm going to let this dry um, and then I'll come back in and I'll finish the underpainting here. Uh, that's, you know, I, I could continue painting if I wanted to. Um, but I'm going to, I don't want to overwhelm you. I'm going to let, let things let things dry in between. It's actually a little bit safer when you're just learning. So I will be right back um, and we'll continue on. Thank you. All right, now I, I let it dry and I filled in some of the places that I um, missed because talking and painting sometimes don't go well together. Also got started on this. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you um, is I always work a little bit elevated and for this I have to be a little more elevated than normal. These are just blocks of wood. This is like a two inch piece and this is a four inch piece or six inch piece. And I, I just set it up there. There are all kinds of, of easels out there but you know having a block of wood or a purse or a roll of tape or something having that little bit of elevation lets gravity help you as you paint. Otherwise it just sits there and it pulls up. You're also not seeing it flat to your eye and so there's a little bit of distortion. So always try to have it a little bit elevated uh, when you're working. Now I'm going to finish down here. This is just a little bit of, of uh, sap green and this was that burnt sienna that I added a little more alizarin crimson to because there's some there's some I don't know what that is it's a red red vine of some sort going along there now I'm not going to do like detail detail I'm going to just do some uh, suggestion this is will end up being like the highlights for this green down there and when I paint, I don't paint like a like a wall. You know, this is this is plants and stuff. So I I will paint and, and kind of daub my paint on. That you can kind of see the the you know, as I daub, it leaves little uh, blots and, and darker spots and lighter spots overlap even overlap some of that that color I just put on and I, I'm just going to kind of fill in the bottom here just kind of dab it on now my back porch is pretty warm today so this dries pretty quick I go right over the top of some of things that I've already painted. Like I said, watercolor is a transparent medium. So the things that are, are underneath will um, show through to, a, to an extent. They may change a little bit, but they're, they're still going to show through. Come here. Now there's, there's a little bit of that um, vine running through here so I'm just going to throw it in. Now this is actually not a bad thing to do if you've got a color that's that's unique and what I mean by unique is that it it doesn't show up any place else especially something bright like a red. You want to add it in other places so that it looks like it belongs. So I'm just adding some of that vine. I don't know how much of it's going to show at the end, but it's there. It will 
have a little bit of an influence on the final product product come over here add some of the weeds here okay now while that's that's drying I'm going to go back up to the the top of my paper here where I have the water and now I'm going to start putting in in the water I don't want to lose all of that that's now the lighter parts but I am am going to come in with another layer this time it's just going to be the ultramarine blue now you can get as detailed as you want I don't really want a lot of detail but I do want to get that suggestion of you know of the water of some of its changing of color water is flat so you want to keep your brush kind of flat and I'm just I'll put a little bit of this down I'm just going flat across I'm using the the end of my brush here and just using the, the flat part of it now I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to take this is a clean clean brush I've rinsed it out and then I've just dried it off so it's just a little bit damp and just come in and right along the edges of those streaks that I put in I'm just going to soften the edges do a little bit of at a time because like I said right now I'm dealing with a a lot of heat back here so my paint dries really fast in the winter time it wouldn't dry as fast or if it was raining it wouldn't dry as fast but here in California we haven't seen rain in months but keep keep your strokes flat even even these as you you move this this color around picking up a little more of the the ultra this is ultramarine blue do a little bit more and just stop every so often rinse your brush out take just a damp brush and go along the, the, the top and bottom edges of these just to kind of blend them picked up paint instead of water you know don't don't worry about making a mistake you know it's art my mom always would say it's art dear if you want a photograph take a picture of it well I've got the picture I want I want the art now picking up the ultramarine blue again now this oh this color that I'm putting on isn't a lot darker from from the original color that I I put on but because there's there's some color already on there it it helps to to make make it look a little bit darker dry my brush off and touch come right down next to that that masking that I put on there now right along here there is some uh, kind of brown it's it's wet stones and I want to get something out here okay this is just table salt and I'll show you what I'm going to do here in a minute I'm going to take my um, burnt sienna just my straight burnt sienna this time and right along where this water is even maybe even going out a little bit into the water because this is this is the ocean shore the water you know there's high spots in the water low spots up in the dirt come along just put this down 
right along the shoreline and even add a little bit of that 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 blue to it just I'm just touching this is just just a little bit of ultramarine blue that I'm I'm touching and letting letting the paint do it this is what I love about watercolor is that it will do a lot of the painting for you if you just let it all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my salt and I'm just going to just sprinkle it on there how well seasoned painting just kind of blew a little bit of it off I just wanted to get it in there before it dried and then I'm gonna make make some more of that gray that I had before and then come up in here and just add the gray this is just another layer of the gray This is the drier rocks right along with the ocean there. Just putting that on. I want to soften this edge because this is kind of the edge right there at the where the path is. This is just a, a clean damp brush. Get that a little wetter. Same thing, I'm going to take the salt, just salt that area. And now I'm going to let this all dry and I will be back in just a flash. All right, now I've let this dry and I probably didn't get the paint as dark as I needed so that you could see the the salt there's a little bit of modeling in there the salt as it dissolves kind of pushes the the paint away and then and it absorbs just a little bit of it and then when you brush it off you can see some texture but I'm I'm not seeing as much as I would like but with this I don't want to get it too dark because it's in the distance I do want to come back in. I've got everything underpainted. Um, I want to come back in and do a little bit more work on the water here and then start working around where I've got masking fluid. One thing with masking fluid uh, is that you don't want to um, leave it on too long. I just happen to notice I've got masking fluid someplace where I don't need it and so I'm just going to take it off and you can see what happens. Leave that because I do want that there but I had my fence fence up too high. That's okay I'll just make it into something else. There's a rock or something there. Um, but what can happen if you leave it on too long it will tend to kind of soak into the paper and if you leave it someplace where it's warm like back here on my my pet, uh, uh, studio uh, it can it can accelerate that process so you want to get things done as soon as you can if you know you're going to set it aside for a few weeks take the masking fluid off and then put it back on again so that, that's just a little word of warning. I found something that I forgot all about and it had been six months and it was gone. There was nothing I could do to, to pull it off. But it, it will be okay for um, several, several weeks. This has only been on mine for a few days. So it's, it's not going to be um, causing any problems. I'm just picking up some ultramarine blue. And I'm going to come back here and and just kind of go over over this this area again. Just I'm just kind of going sliding my my brush across. Now this isn't a whole lot darker than what I've I've put down before. Rinse my brush. Come in here and 
just touch the edges of those brush marks just to soften them. This is water. It's not hard. It has soft edges. I'm also going to pick up a little bit of sap green. Now if you don't have sap green, you can just mix some yellow into your ultramarine blue. I want kind of a, a kind of a light green right here, right right where the the water starts to foam there's just a little bit of a change of color in there so i'm just going to put a little little hint of that in places it just indicates that maybe it's a little shallower you, maybe you're seeing a little sand or something underneath that soften the edge Come back in with my blue, just add a little more color, a little more darkness. As you put on, as you put on layers of, of paint, the, each layer is going to affect the layer ben, you know, on top of it. So all of those layers that I've put on already are going to have an effect on this layer that I put on. Watercolor is transparent. It's doing some interesting things here, and that's fine. That's what I like about watercolor. And I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of that ultramarine blue to kind of darken it. And right here along the edge where I've got my, my masking, so I'm just going to put some of that little bit darker color because that's where the water is. If you look at, at the ocean or lake or where, whatever, you'll see right where the water and, and land meet, that dirt is, is darker because it's wet. Now this will look different once I take that masking off. But I, I want to want to get this this in. Trying to stay out of the way here. And I always come back in with just a damp, you know, dry it off, and just a damp brush right at the the bottom so that it it softens. I'll have to come in and do something when I remove that masking because there will be some hard edges. Okay, so I'm going to just leave that for now. I'll wait and see how it looks um, when it's dry. Remember, don't judge it when it's wet because it looks totally different when it's dried. Now I'm going to come in and start working on some of this uh, some of this plants that are in, in the middle ground here. And again, I'm going to come back in. It'll be layers. This will be my hooker's green and a little bit of the ultramarine blue and water. and maybe just a little touch of burnt sienna. All right, so let me bring this over. So I've got my, my hooker's green, a little bit of my ultramarine blue, and a little touch of the burnt sienna. That kind of, that burnt sienna goes in and grays that green color. And burnt sienna is basically an orange, but it's got a little red in it. So the, the red kind of uh, negates the green, and the orange kind of negates the blue to make kind of a gray color. And I'm going to, that I've got my uh, reference right in front of me, and I'm going to look at that 
and I'm, I'm going to come in and just do this first first layer. There's there's a bush here. Just kind of want to make it a little uneven. Leave some of that lighter color. I'm just tapping. I'm just using the end of my brush and just kind of tapping. You can do this with just a regular um, flat brush too, or a round brush. I just I just really like these angle brushes. I'm gonna rinse my brush. Work in small in small areas. So I, I've dried it off because I don't want it real wet. And I'm just gonna come up and right along the top, just kind of touch it and soften it so it doesn't have a a real hard edge. These are in the distance, so everything's gonna be softer, grayer, less less detail. Now I will show you how to how I'm going to be doing some of this and then I'm going to take a break and I'm going to finish some finish out some of the rest of it because you don't really need to watch me paint here but I'm just going to go around Put down some of this color. This is not the final color. This is still a little bit of underpainting, but each time we're going to leave little bits of what was there before, which becomes highlight, it becomes texture. Um, you know, it, it becomes a lot of things. Over here, there's a kind of a little lump of this painting around when you paint around you're painting the negative space around something now there's kind of a blue gray so I've got that blue on my palette and I'm just going to come in and just add that as well. So this is, I'm just kind of tapping it, leaving some of the, the underpainting, creating these differences in, in color. It's going to look messy for a long time. You know, don't get discouraged if it doesn't look perfect because that's just the nature of the beast. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to do a little bit more work on that middle ground and then I'll come in and we'll do the the foreground here. So I'll be right back. All right, now I've, I've kind of finished the background here. Now remember, this is just the next layer. Where I'm not anywhere near the, um, the finished product yet. This is just the next layer. Um, what I want to do, do now is to come into the foreground and finish that up. I do have these two little parts of this fence. They're kind of leaning back, so they're picking up a little bit more of the sun. I didn't um, uh, put any masking fluid on them because they they were big enough I thought I could paint around them. So right now what I want to do is, is put the underpainting for them on and bring my palette here. I'm going to take a little bit, this is my burnt sienna, and I'm just going to work down the same same area. That's burnt sienna and a little bit of yellow kind of make this warm, almost like a mustardy color, but there's a lot of water in it. When I go off camera, I'm, I'm picking up some water, but that's going to be my underpainting. And I'm, I'm going to paint the whole, the whole thing here. Just, this is just water I put on my brush. Go right over what was there before and just 
paint those those two together and I'll just let them dry before I do anything else to them. Now I'm going to come back in. I'm going to start over here on on the fence. Bring my palette back up here so you can see it. Um, remember it's 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 in the shadows. Let me bring this down. These are all in shadow except for those two and some of the edges there. So when we do shadows we have to keep our colors cool. So this is going to be kind of a cool blue-gray. Again my favorite mix of color which is the ultramarine blue and a little touch of burnt sienna and this time I'm going to add just a touch of alizarin crimson to it that'll kind of purple it up a little bit like I said that that burnt sienna in there just kind of modifies the blue, it kind of grays the blue down. You can mix gray from any of the complementary colors. So blue and orange will make a gray, red and green will make a gray, yellow and purple will make a gray. Um, you just have to play with it. You have to learn what's going on with them. Again, I'm just going to come through and just, just paint I'll paint around some of the areas where I think there's going to be some twigs or bushes, like around there. Right down there at the bottom. Now you notice that when I was working in the, between the, I just, just kind of dotted that to put the, the background plants in. Now I don't care if I don't cover everything up completely. There will be variations in a color. You know, and just so that you don't freak out if something happens, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of my hooker's green because it's a, a cool green. And you can just touch some, some other colors in there. There may be some reflected greens from all the green that is around it. So don't don't worry if you've got extra color in there because that's just normal. Uh, the, there may be moss growing on these things. There, there could be um, you know, old paint left on here. I don't know. See, I just remixed the color and it's a little bit different color. I'm not going to worry about it. It could be different kinds of wood. They, this is an old fence. They may have replaced things occasionally. So, so you know, if it's not exactly perfect, don't worry about it. That makes your your painting unique. It gives it a, a more natural look rather than if you're, um, you know, just one, one color, one solid color. Throw a little, little green in there, just touch it. Just let the paint do its own thing. That's, that's the beauty of watercolor. There are times when I'm working in, in one of my other mediums and I'll think, well, I know what I would do if I was working in watercolor, but I can't get there from here. So I have to find a, a different way. I just mix some more color. Now this is a little closer to the last color that I had. Rinse my brush. I'm going to just pick, pick it up. This is just a damp brush. Pick up that those drips so they don't go down my page. Remember I'm working on on an incline and you guys should be working on an incline as well because that gravity actually helps you. It, it makes the the paint move. Now you don't have to to work on as high an incline as I have. I have it up about 
maybe six inches and when I'm teaching in class I work on an easel so it's it's almost at a 90 degree angle and I'm, I'm always fighting gravity at that point in time but having that little bit of incline will be helpful to you you know even if it's just a roll of tape said that before have a little incline in there come in here now I'm going to warm up these a little bit so I'm going to add a little more um, burnt sienna to it because for some reason they seem to be picking up just a little bit more light there was a little green on there too just something that was on my my palette But I, one of the th things I see that beginners do, they want to make sure that every color is exactly the same. And it's not. You know, the colors are not the same. You know, if you look at your, your room, start where it's light, you know, where the light's coming in, and then... You know, follow it across to the shadows, and you'll see that even the the paint that was out of the same can, depending on what light is shining on it and things like that, um, the the color the color changes. So if if the color changes, you know, maybe there's a a blue curtain or something, and that blue curtain may be leaving color on on your white walls. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave right right below it so I don't don't get too much um, bleeding going on. That it would be okay at this point. It's not going to bother me too much. Now I'm picking up some this is my my sap green and I'm just mixing it in with what's here may add just a touch of yellow to that and I'll, I will put a little bit more water in now I'm gonna come in and just I'm tapping again some of my tapping I overlap some of it I, I'll leave spaces be careful around any wet areas But I'm just going to come in and, and tap and, and put in the, the green here. Then we're going to end this today at this point. You can go ahead and, and finish getting the bottom all. This is like the next layer of, of underpainting. But get that in. And then when we come back on the next uh, part of this, then we're going to start doing things a little more defined. Come in, get a little more um, detail work in, start putting in some shadows, start creating some, you know, individual plants. I haven't really started that yet. Work a little more on the the boards of this fence and maybe even get the masking fluid off. So until next time, be safe, call your neighbors and friends, check in on them, and, and please keep painting. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you for watching.